and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Kerrigan. <laughs> Welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you, thank you. And uh, here we are again. Another wonderful Witch Talk live show on Ustream now in video, which is absolutely amazing. Now I have um, a couple of things that I wanted to, to say to you before we go to uh, details about this show. Well, first of all, it's a wonderful show because this is uh, one of those guests that we have today, uh, one of those guests that it's always a pleasure to have here. And it's the second time that she's coming on Witch Talk, which is a pleasure for us and for everybody else. I'm I'm absolutely positive. Um, and uh, before we introduce the, the, the show, I want to talk to you a little bit more about a few a couple of things that changed in the last week. One of them is, as you know, Witch Talk Show has uh, a podcast. Podcast. So all of this sound that you're hearing right now uh, and seeing on video will go just uh, as sound to a podcast. And we changed providers for the podcast. So now we have another provider, which is called Buzzsprout. And it's very, very good. This is the website. You can just get there um, by typing witchtalk.buzzsprout.com. And that's B U Z Z S. P R O U T dot com. And also, um, there is another uh, thing that I want to show you, which is our um, Facebook page. Well, nothing new in there, but the thing is that this provider of the podcast, actually, it's very good because the, every time we post um, on Facebook, you can actually hear it directly from Facebook. So you don't need to go to the website in order to hear the, the show. Um, also, we have something new here on, on, on the Witch Talk Facebook page. Uh, it's a flash site, which is completely new. We did this um, uh, just today, and uh, it it has a lot of information. Uh, it has an about uh, about me and Indigo Astray. It's also have a schedule um, and um, actually Twitter that will be in here and also a contact form if you want to contact us. So if you're an author or anything like that, you can just um, contact us in here. Um, so that's basically it. Um, but I'm going to let you know a little bit more in detail how you can contact us on Witch Talk. Here we go. So, you want to know how to keep in touch with everything Witch Talk? Go to www.witchtalkshow.com and follow all the latest news, listen directly to the show, and enjoy it. If you're on the move, take Witch Talk with you by subscribing to our Witch Talk podcast on iTunes or by following us on Buzzsprout Witch Talk site by going to witchtalkbuzzsprout.com. Don't forget to join us on Ustream Crowd. Go to www.ustream.tv slash channel slash witchtalk dash show. Miss the show? Don't worry. Every show will be recorded and available for you to watch or listen both in Ustream and Buzzsprout. Witch Talk will air every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or approximately 9 p.m. in most Europe. Now live in video, watch us on Ustream. Follow us on Twitter at Carrigan, K-H-A-R-A-G-A-N with an H after the K. Or send us an email at witchtalkshow at gmail.com. Now back to the show. Back to the show it is. Now, today I want to talk to you a little bit more about our events. We have a lot of events. Well, this is an event, obviously, you know, our show. But um, there is a, other, a couple of uh, other events that I think that are important to mention. Um, one of them is the... Um, St. Louis Pagan Picnic, which I think it's very interesting. It's a public event. Uh, it's on Saturday, June the 11th at 10... Um, 
well, Saturday was actually, was it? Was it? No, no, no. Uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, and June 12 at 5 p.m. in the Tower Grove Park. Uh, and it's it's very interesting. Now, another one that I think that it's very interesting, and this one is actually in Portugal, and it's ongoing right now. It's the, the Celtic Day, which is very interesting because we're now going to talk a little bit about Celtic things, so it's very nice. It's uh, it's today uh, and from 4 to 9 p.m. So actually I think that it's just just finished because 4 p.m. here uh, is 9 p.m. there. Uh, now other things that it's very interesting is the free spirit gathering and this will go on Tuesday June 14th at 10 a.m. and June 19th at, at uh, 12 p.m. Uh, Darlington MD and um, it's a very very uh, interesting um, gathering um, of Wiccans, Druids, Shamans, Azutra, uh, solitary practitioners, secular humanists, I mean it's uh, Buddhists, every, every, everybody's going to be there so it's a very interesting thing also to look at. There is is the convention of um, the witches and the mask ball in Brazil. This is on Saturday, June the 18th at 11 p.m., June 19th at uh, 5.30 a.m. Uh, it's it's uh, very interesting because it's on Sao Paulo, Brazil, so you can just, if you are uh, in Sao Paulo at this point, you can go to this fantastic ball. Um, and have a great time. Now, uh, other uh, things that it's very interesting to mention is that the Pagan Federation Portugal is going to be a part of the f um, Lisbon Feasts this year, 2011, which is something that uh, never occurred before. So it's really, really good. And they will have a little booth on the feasts um, of Lisbon, Portugal, and it will be a very interesting thing to see how people react to the Pagan Federation having a booth in the middle of the feasts um, in Lisbon. So it's very interesting. Temple Fest 2011, it's another event that I think that it's very interesting. Uh, Saturday, June 18th at 10 a.m. and June 19th at 1 p.m. Far Acres Farm, um, 45 Hilldale Avenue, Southampton, New Hampshire. So this will be a very interesting thing also to attend. Um, and that's basically it, I guess. So now we're going to, after the news, we're going to Witch, uh, witch Reads with Indigo Australia and um, see what she uh, brings today for us. Here we go. <laughs> Witches talk about which books witches read. With Indigo Estrella, Witch Reads. Hello, Indigo. Hello, Kerrigan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. It's beautiful weather outside. I can't complain. I know. I know. I love <laughs> it. I really love it. Um, now we have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, events. I'm sorry that I'm late, but you know uh, it's kind oh, of that's like fine. yeah. I I kind of felt like you know um, like the news, you know the kind of <laughs> But it's very interesting. I think that it's important for people to know. So um, what do you bring us today? Today I have fairy tale rituals from Kenny Klein. Oh wow! And uh, yes. So so tell me, what do you think about that? Uh, well, okay. First of all, what drew my attention was mm. this amazing cover. I mean, this, you can tell it's Snow White. Yes. And she, she doesn't have that sweet, innocent look that you would typically associate with, you know, pure as the driven snow, Snow White. <laughs> She's very alluring. Yes. So, you know, I, I was immediately interested in the book. And um, when it comes to things like fairy tale rituals, I thought it could either be really, really good or horribly bad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm happy to say it's really, really good. Oh, that's, um, great. that's great. Well, <laughs> let me been... just let me just to interrupt you. I just have to say that I just love Kenny's Klein's um, covers. They're yeah. absolutely amazing. They are. Yeah. yeah. I, I, they're just they're, they have that that draw. Yes. You know, I've known a lot of um, I, I've noticed a lot of the fairy artwork. You know, relating to mm -hmm. the the fae. Mm -hmm. It's got that that kind of mystical just magnetism that you just you want to pick it up. Yes, it's very very And this definitely 
has that magnetism to it. What do you think about the covers of the books? I mean, I, this is a very interesting thing that we are just, you know, uh, opening here because it's very important that the cover of the book really call the attention yes. of the readers. Oh, um, yes. And, and sometimes, you know, the cover, normally when the cover is good, the book is good too. Um, At least you'd hope so. <laughs> yeah, well, we hope so. But then again, you know, I've seen, I've, I've even read books that have really poor cover art, but inside, they're the fantastic. information is fantastic, yeah. mm. and it's unfortunate because I have to be honest. If I see a book that's got a horrible cover art, like what I've read, I probably wouldn't have picked it up in the bookstore. Oh, absolutely! I, I think that the cover is one of the uh, the cover is the, the, what makes you pick up the book. First. Exactly. And then, obviously, you know, if somebody says, "Oh, there's this book that it's wonderful," obviously, you don't really, you know, care about the cover. But uh, if you're <laughs> if you're just strolling, you know, if you're just like go to, you know, um, you know, a bookstore or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you will pick this book up because yes. this book has a fantastic. Um, I would. I, wouldn't you have a bite of this apple? I mean, I would have a bite of this apple. <laughs> I don't know because I know the story of Snow White. I, oh, I, I don't care. Be... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. no, it looks. It looks good. The apple looks good. Everything looks good, and she's in this attitude of giving you the apple. It's kind of like, do you want it? She's got a very intense look, though. It does. I don't it's, know. That's yeah. it's almost. I've seen high priestesses giving that look before, and it's kind of that that challenging mm -hmm. you to take that leap. So I would be, <laughs> I would be kind of. Hmm. hmm. Let me consider my options here. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk a little bit more, more about the book, and why is this book so special, and why is it so, um, you know, that you liked it so much. Well, you know, I'm I'm a huge fan of fairy tales. Mm -hmm. uh, I always have been since I was a child. So I was really interested to see what Kenny would do with stories that we all know. Um, and they've been immortalized in, you know, songs and films and, you know, different various... I mean, m the majority of the old Disney movies are based off of the Grimm's fairy tales. Yeah. So, you know, it, and we've all seen that. At least once. We've all seen Snow White, all seen Cinderella. Yeah. So, you know, it, it was very, I was very curious to see wh where he would take this and how they really uh, relate to modern paganism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he did a fantastic job. Not only did he show what the popular conceptions of the Grimm stories are, he dug deeper into older sources and looked at what the the tales were before the Grimm's kind of changed it to fit their mm -hmm, their modern mm -hmm. moralities and sensibilities, um, and it's it's very very interesting. Uh, for example, the book starts off with Snow White, and what Kenny says is he he gives the case that Snow White isn't just a regular person; she happens to be a nymph or an urchin, because in various stories she manifests herself after. For example, the most modern or most popular story of the Grimm's tale is the mother is sitting at the window sewing and says out loud, oh, I wish I had a, a child that had, you know, that was as white as the snow, as red as the blood, because she pricked her finger and three drops of blood fell into the snow. As white as the snow, as red as blood, and as black as this ebony picture frame I'm standing next to. Mm -hmm. Now, he says that if you say something like that out loud, a fairy can manifest itself into your life. Or there's another story of um, a king and his wife, and he says that he would like to have a child. And then out of the woods comes this, this girl who is beautiful, mm -hmm. and he picked her up and put her in the carriage. Um, and that would make more sense for the jealous mother mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. if there was an unwanted child. Um, but he also gives the case, you know, using Snow White as the example, that she had a fairy allure that made men fall madly in love with her on first sight mm -hmm. and made her mother insanely jealous of her beauty. And um, she used her fairy charm and her appeal to make the mirror believe that she was the most beautiful in the land. And with her snow white skin and her ebony hair and her red cheeks, that may have been more beautiful to the nobles of the land. But, for example, the huntsman who saves her life the first time, um, he was probably not of noble class. Yeah. And mm -hmm. for those people, it probably the, the idea of beauty would have been a larger, blonde, tan woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he, he thought she was so beautiful, he saved her life and killed a, a pig or a bear and, you know, 
took out the hearts and lung and said, oh, look, Snow White is dead. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, it's really interesting how he goes through, and there's so many different fairy tales that he just kind of, he pulls apart and he, he gives wonderful new insights into these, you know, these stories that we all know. Um, what he said is he hoped that he provided a deeper understanding of fairy tales and gave new points of view on the tales collected by the Grimm's. Mm -hmm. And I think he did a fantastic job. Now, how this, does this tie back into uh, rituals? Well, at the end of each, uh, each story that he you know, kind of just dissects, he, he takes the main focus of the story. Like, mm -hmm. for example, Snow White. He, does a he provides a ritual for sexual attraction. Um, mm -hmm. There's a story of Hansel and Gretel, which I'm sure you've heard of Hansel and Gretel before, yes. right? Yeah. Um, it's very interesting. He says, and he gives he gives fantastic cases for each of his um, his insights. That Hansel and Gretel, it's it's a reflection of the fairy mirror. So in this world, they are oppressed by a mother who abandons them, starves them, just wants them out of the house because they can't afford to feed these kids. And when they cross over into the land of the fairy, they find this mother who is overly motherly gives them all the food that they want and overfeeds them yeah. and he's saying that that is the same mother figure that is you know she's gone into the land of the fairy to try to to catch them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's very interesting so there's you know there's this ritual at the end of that for fairy mirror magic that's amazing very good it is. it's really fantastic yeah. You know, there's Little Red Riding Hood for spells for unwanted uh, attention, for preventing unwanted attention. Um, there's even a ritual to celebrate a young woman coming of age oh. with Rapunzel. Mm -hmm. And also um, from Strong Hans, there's a ritual to celebrate a man's coming of age, oh. which i got to be honest, I haven't seen too many. Uh, it's very that. rare. It's very rare. Um, and and uh, I know I know that there are some people who really you know work that, but um, mm -hmm. it's it's rare. It's not really something that you can see. Um, there is more women coming to age than men coming to age, yeah. so it's kind yeah. of like you know rituals. I mean, not men and women. <laughs> and um, it's actually a yeah. really really interesting ritual. Yeah. And this the story that it relates to Strong Hans. Oh yeah. It's not. I I haven't heard this fairy tale before, and it. It makes perfect sense why it would be a man's coming of age ritual. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, it's, absolutely. It's fantastic. So, how I many know. how many cauldrons do we have here? I'm gonna give it four and a half cauldrons, wow. which I think, for the record, is the highest I've given any neo pagan book. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah, that's very it's good. Very good. I, I really, really highly recommend it. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be using all the spells or all the rituals in mm -hmm. this book. Um, but there are definitely some, you know, for example, some sympathetic, the sympathetic mm -hmm. <laughs> magic that I will be uh, using. And and tell me why the half? Why not five? Well, there are some times when he just references an older source, mm -hmm. um, and it's not always, just occasionally. And I I would like to know what the older source is. Oh, he doesn't say. It. Well, he usually does. There's oh. just some times where you know I'm kind of like. At least put a footnote. He puts footnotes throughout the book. Yes. He includes names of, you know, which copy of the Grimm's, uh, the, the English translation he used. Mm -hmm. um, he, he provides a lot of the sources, but just not always. Yeah. And it's always the times when I want to look into that <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have to say, I'm a little bit biased because he does do some Valley Girl trash talk. Just a, just a tad. Oh, okay. And I'm from the Valley. Okay. I am a valley girl. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Kenny, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. But, um... Okay. So four, four and a half, right? Four and yes. a half. Okay. But also, I have to say that if it's a five cauldron book, that for me that means it's approachable for absolutely everyone of any tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you can pick up this book and get some use out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if many ceremonial magicians would get a lot out of this. Mm -hmm. There are some um, some rituals that are based in Kabbalah, yeah. and there is a frequent use of tarot. But I mean, it, it's typically more of a neo-pagan and Wiccan focus, mm -hmm. which you know it makes sense because Kenny is one of the um, I believe he's one of the founders of Blue Star Wicca. Yes. Yeah. So uh, you know, it, I don't know if everyone would find something interesting in this, but if you have an interest in fairy tales. I highly recommend it. Good. That's wonderful. 
Well, thank you so much. This is wonderful. I love to have four and a half stars of Cauldron's <laughs> uh, books. In it's the... been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So thank you so much, Indigo. And uh, you're going to stay on the uh, chat room, right? And I will. Yeah. And uh, we will hear from you next week, right? Yes, you Thank you so much for being here and for giving us this wonderful review. Thank you. Thanks, Kerrigan. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs> That was Indigo Australia reviewing a book of Canon Klein, um, The Fairy Tale Rituals. It was very, very interesting. Now, let's go to um, our. Let me just introduce our guest because this is something that uh, we, uh, I am very eager to do. So, here we go. Ellen Effort Oppmann is a Druid priestess, master herbalist, and lay homeopath who holds an MED in mental health counseling. She is a founding member and co-chief of the Order of the White Oak, serves on the Great Council of Mages and Sages, and is a professor of work cunning at the Grey School of Wizardry. She is also the author of A Druid's Herbal for the Sacred Earth Year, Walking the World in Wonder, Being a Pagan, Tree Medicine, Tree Magic, Priests of the Forest, and The Druid Isle. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guest today, again, on Witch Talk, Ellen Evert Oppmann. Hello, Ellen. Thank you so much for being here again on Witch Talk. This is a pleasure. How are you? I'm good in post-tornado western Massachusetts. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me again. <laughs> You're welcome. You know that uh, some people in Europe don't really realize that Massachusetts, it's not really just one chunk of land. It's actually, there's uh, places in Massachusetts. So um, the whole thing was in Springfield, you know, what it hit it the most. And, and um, you know, I had friends of mine in England saying, are you okay? Yes, I am. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm in Salem, but uh, it's well, most a... people most people think Massachusetts is Boston. Yes, it's true. That's what they yeah, think. Yeah, that's, but, um, that's true. But now the the tornado was actually I, I was actually in it. I was driving in it, oh, and wow. uh, I, I, I there were hailstones the size of grapes that were hitting the car, and I was terrified. Oh, wow. So I pulled over, went into a gas station because I thought my windshield was going to crack. Yeah. Pretty soon car after car was pulling in and then we had a tornado party and then there were actually two tornadoes so we w we were in the gas station riding out two tornadoes oh who god. who would have sunk oh my god that's amazing <laughs> in western mass in western mass isn't that amazing it's amazing yeah. it's amazing so how are you and what have you done since we last talked um, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very well, boring. I don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few things. No, but I, I well, I guess the, the number one thing that, that we need to talk about is the new book, oh, yeah. um, which is coming out June 21st yes. on the solstice, yes. which is very nice. Yes. Um, that's what I've been working on um, feverishly uh, mm -hmm. for the last few months, mm -hmm. getting that edited and, and ready yeah. to go. Yeah. Yeah. And now, for uh, those, it's called the. Uh, go hmm? ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Scottish Herbs and Fairy Lore. Yes, is the I, title. I was going to tell the, the, the title of the book, uh, Scottish Herbs and, and Fairy Lore. Now, this is right. a very interesting book. Um, and it's it's not a small book. It's, it's, it's a, I don't know if it is a big book, but it's, it's a substantial book, let's just say that. It's absolutely amazing. But why did you went to Scottish? Um, I mean, it's very focused on Scottish herbs and fairy lore. Um, why did you um, chose this particular, you know, place in? Uh, why Scottish? Okay, well, I I first went to Scotland in 1983. Mm -hmm. um, I lived at the Findhorn community for a while, and actually, my second novel, The Druid Eye, mm -hmm. is based on actual experiences that I had at an actual place in the Hebrides of Scotland uh, during that time. Um, 
And then I went back a second time with uh, Dr. Patrick McManaway, just the two of us, which was very nice. And um, we went all around Angus and uh, Fife uh, primarily and uh, Perthshire, I believe, um, looking at Pictish stones mm -hmm. and recumbent stone circles. So that's the second trip. And then the third trip was just a few years ago. I went again. Uh, this time I concentrated on Orkney, uh, which I hadn't been to before. And uh, about 10 years ago, I found out and something that I never knew before, which was that I did have Scottish heritage through my mother. Oh. Uh, <laughs> here I've been going to Scotland, you know, <laughs> living there and so on. I had no idea. Um, it was through her father. I found out her father's family were originally Scottish, and then I guess they were thrown out during the clearances. And around 1760, they surfaced in Prussia. Yes. And then they became Germanized Scots, and then they came to America oh. from Prussia. So um, anyway, I, had, I did not know that I had Scottish ancestry. So but, but it, you do have this, must be part this, of it. Yeah, yeah, and you do have this connection. So uh, did, did, wasn't wasn't any clue in there? I mean, you might think, oh, I might have been here in another life or something because I well, really <laughs> like this. I, okay, <laughs> I was born in Austria, yes. and when I was growing up, um, you know, my mother used to talk about the Celts, and she would always talk about the Celts with incredible reverence. Mm. Um, so I grew up hearing about the Celts, and I and I never thought uh, anything about it. I just thought everybody felt the way about the Celts. <laughs> I had no idea that this was unusual at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really start looking into it until my 30s um, when I heard Celtic music for the first time. And it was, you know, that set me off on a journey. Uh, the minute I heard um, my first jigs and reels, you know, I kind of went nuts. And I was actually a Cayley dancer um, for a while in Philadelphia. I belonged to the Irish Center there, and I did Cayley dancing. And um, awesome. And I've also been to Ireland a few times, so that's, <laughs> that's another story. That's but um, I, I've always had this very strong connection, I mean, since I was a baby, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. to the Celts, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, fairy lore, and there's a lot of magic on this book. There's a lot of things that you talk about, you know, you you touch so many, so many things that are absolute. this book, it, I, I'm telling you, you know, this is not out, so it's going to be out on June 21st, but I'm telling you that this is an amazing, amazing book that people will be absolutely flabbergasted about it, because it's it contains... Well, it's about 400, 400 pages. Oh, I, I know. Please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's... Because <laughs> <laughs> just the table of contents, it's a banquet of, of knowledge that you yeah. can't resist. I mean, you can't resist. You have things about, you know, very simple things about the Druids, the old gods, the lore of the elementals, but you also have water magic, fire magic, mm -hmm. you know, all of those yeah. things that people don't really talk about. And then you have stones and bones and talismans, which is something... All also that people don't really talk about. And one of the things that I was most surprised um, was that, well, first of all, you have uh, death rites, which is something that you don't really, again, talk too much about it, and you can't find it too much in books. Um, but the thing is that I just, I, there are things here, there are absolutely pearls. One of them is second sight, which is something that, again, nobody talks about. Uh, <laughs> you know, a, lo a lot of things that are absolutely amazing. One of them, it's curses, which is something that people avoid at all costs because people think oh no 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 we don't go there let's just wipe that one out and you just put it in here also um it, it, so why why all of the i mean this is absolutely amazing this is almost like an encyclopedia of magic <laughs> tell me why well, an encyclopedia of scottish magic yes yes yes, yes. Well so tell me. Well, I mean, I what I do. This is what I do. Usually, when I can get over to Europe, um, which is getting harder these days. Yes. But uh, in the past, when I had credit cards, <laughs> I used to go over. And what I would do is I would go. This is my thing. I go to a museum usually, hang out, go to the bookstore, and try to find the most esoteric uh, books that I can mm -hmm. in the country. 
Uh, so th in the last trip, you know, usually my suitcase, when I leave, it's half empty. When I come back, it's full of books. Yes. <laughs> you know, and my, I have a book in my purse, a book in my backpack, you know, because you can only take so many pounds. Yes, it's true. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> that's what I do. I come back with, with books. So my last trip to Scotland, I went to um, a museum in Orkney. I believe it was in Kirkwall. Um, and I raided the museum shop, and I found a few books on um, the Shetland um, magical practices and um, Orkney in general, and also Scottish magic and so on, things that you would never find uh, in the United States. Yes, yes. So I combined that with the Carmina Gadolica, which most people know about now, yes. um, which is a fabulous source uh, for magic from the Hebrides, uh, hymns and invocations. Mm -hmm. um, and I just put that together, and also through in my own experience. I, I try to say, you know, in my experience. Yes, know, yes, 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 yes. Throughout. Yeah, yeah. Now, tell me, uh, you know, just just for for the people that are listening to us and watching this, um, tell tell me what what can people expect from this? I mean, we already you know opened the menu, but <laughs> but I want people to. To, to listen from you, what can they expect when they read this book? Well, um, you could treat it, I guess, as a reference. Uh, I mean, one, one thing, I, I don't want people to feel intimidated because it is a big book, as you said. Mm -hmm. It covers an awful lot of territory. And um, one, I guess one of the main motivations I had for writing it was I, I have not seen a really good book on um, Scottish... Uh, witchcraft or Scottish magic uh, anywhere. I just haven't seen one mm -hmm. uh, where it was all put together for you. But but remember that these are traditions that are pulled from Shetland, Orkney, and the mainland of Scotland. You know, so these are from different areas. So no one person should ever think that they have to do everything that's in the book in order to be practicing Scottish tradition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, even if you just picked one or two things out of there, you know, like mm -hmm. how to greet the moon. When you see the new moon, what do you do? You know, you turn a penny in your pocket, you bow, you, you, you kiss the first person that you meet. Well, little things like that. That is authentic Scottish tradition. Yeah. But even if you just practice a few things, um, I, I, I just don't want people to be intimidated by the scope of this thing. Because mm -hmm. there's just no way that you could do all of it. No, no, no. You know, no. there's yeah, yeah. But it's, it's yeah. There's a lot of go ahead. Go sorry, ahead. sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say there's a lot of fairy lore, uh, yes. especially connected with the trows, you know, mm. and and how you make offerings, you know, and make, I mean, just take a few things if if you want to be practicing Scottish tradition, just take a few things and really do them. Mm -hmm. Would be my advice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. instead of being intimidated by the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, are you, are you, uh, are you, are you? Uh, I mean, you talk about uh, Scottish tradition. If you want to practice Scottish tradition, if you want to practice kind of Scottish tradition, are you, are you uh, coining this this term, this Scottish tradition, or is it just because it's something that it's related to Scotland and you don't really want to, you know, con, <laughs> you know, <laughs> coin anything. <laughs> I'm not creating, I mean, gee, I, I mean, it, ne it never dawned on me. Maybe I just created a new tradition. You know, you know, you know, mean, Ellen, we <laughs> have to be, sometimes we have to be idiot proof. So we have to explain. Yeah. Well, I'm not, okay, I, that was not something that I was consciously <laughs> trying to do. Although if it ends up that way, I, I have no problem with it. Because, I mean, one thing about this book is it's not made up. Yeah. I mean, I, it's heavily footnoted. Yes. All through it, you know, you can you can follow the footnotes and see exactly where everything comes. This is not made up woo woo, you know. This yeah. is this is actual stuff that was actually done by the actual Scottish ancestors, you know. So, so to me, that's exciting. That's what I like. I like to find genuine old practices that were done for centuries, if not thousands of years. Yeah and to bring them forward into the present so that they can be kept alive and kept going. Yeah. It's just a way of honoring the ancestors and everything yeah. that they created. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. to me, that's exciting. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what we call Celtic Reconstructionism. Yeah. You know, you try to find genuine, actual things that were done and bring them 
into the present. Now, and that's from this book. What is your favorite part? My favorite part. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, wow. I wrote the freaking book. What kind of question is that? <laughs> no, no, but I, I well. Mean, well, there are some things that you know. I know that writers, when they do write the book, I mean, they obviously they write the book. They like the the, the book. I mean, if they didn't like it, they wouldn't write write it. But there are some things that you find out on your research that probably there's one thing that it's close to your heart. Well, I, like, I mean. Yeah, there's no one section of the book that I love, but there's little bits of yeah, the things. Yeah, like, for example, I mean. fairy stones. Um, for some reason, it really stuck in my head, the white stone of the fairies. Mm -hmm. And every time I take a walk in the woods now, um, I, I often will find a white stone. And then I say to myself, oh, that's the fairy stone. And often I'll pick it up. So I have this little pile of fairy stones, you know, in front of the door. Things like that, yeah. just little things that that struck me, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, this this is a this is a true story. I mean, I'm sure most people know about the whole tradition of an owl announcing a death, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you read about that in the books. Well, this is a true story. When one day I was sitting in the kitchen or standing in the kitchen doing the dishes. And all of a sudden, this owl, and this has never happened before or since, was right outside the kitchen door, hooting madly. And I thought, oh, OK, it's probably calling to its mate or something. And I tried to ignore it. But it went on for so long, and it was so insistent that finally I went, oh, yeah, that's right. It's announcing a death. Yeah. So I, I said outside to, I spoke outside the door. I said, OK, I hear you. I hear you. And gradually the owl calmed down, you know, and stopped hooting. Well, the very next morning I turned on the computer to check my email, and Alexei Kondratiev had passed away. Oh. And the, the owl literally came to tell me. And, um, yeah, and, and I asked, uh, I don't know if you know Jane Sibley. She's a wonderful mm -hmm. Norse uh, practitioner. But, but I asked her, I said, you know, why do you think the owl came to tell me? I think, um, you know, other people knew about it. I didn't. You know, I said, why did the owl come to tell me? And she said, well, he's a druid, or he was a druid, and you're a druid, and they wanted to make sure that you knew. Yeah, that's amazing. That's very, very good. Now, um, this is an amazing book. Out in June 21st, right? Hello? Ellen? We lost Ellen. It's okay. <laughs> we're going to get her again I guess that yeah we did we did lost her okay so let's see Ellen are you there yes you are but let's try to you know hang out hand the phone and then I will call you again okay she probably is listening to me but you know I can't really listen to her so I'm going to do it again and see if she responds to our call. It's busy. She's trying to call me. <laughs> Hello? No. Okay. Let's see if she's... Oh, hello. hello. Okay, so <laughs> continue the conversation. You know what that was? That was the fairies. They do that. Really? I... Yes, wow. because I think we were talking about the other world. Yes, And they true. heard us. Oh, well... Sorry. <laughs> now, this whole thing, I just have to say that th that you are when I, when I was preparing for the for the interview and everything, I I generally do this. I just go to the internet, I browse the site of the author, I read I read the books and you know all of those things, but when there are some other things that are available, um I also see it. So you have a few videos available. Yes. On DVDs. YouTube. Yes. And it's absolutely amazing. I think that, you know, you you are, I mean, for people that don't really know Ellen, first of all, you can hear her. So this is the suiting voice of Ellen, Evan Opman. 
and she has this fantastic soothing voice. And then the other thing is that she is the most amazing. <laughs> you can listen to Ellen for hours in a conference. So if she's saying something or a workshop or anything, it's just you just stay, 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 stay. And then when it when it's up, I mean it's end the end of it, you'll go like, oh, I want a little bit more because <laughs> I really love the way you spoke, speak, and and explain things, and it's very very interesting. Now. Um, you have a YouTube channel, right? Is this true? Uh, I think so. No, no, I have some clips on Vimeo. 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 Oh, Vimeo. There's some clips that people can see. Um, you can you, actually, if you just go to my website, ellenevertotman.com, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, you can access the clips from there. And those are just little clips of longer DVDs that are available. Okay, so DVD releases. You have right. uh, a lot of them here. And it's absolutely amazing. I just love it. I really do love it. And you have this wonderful <laughs> Gifts from the Healing Earth, Volume 1. It's wonderful. I just love it. And you can see little snips of it and little... Uh, it's absolutely amazing. So now, uh, Alan, I don't know. Obviously, you're not seeing it. But I'm showing your website and where it is. So, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Gifts from the Healing Earth Volume 2. So you have a lot of uh, um, very nice uh, DVDs. Um, but I was talking about one workshop, I guess, that you did about sacred cosmology of the Druids. That um, mm -hmm. And you're, you're kind of demonstrating, you know, the will of the year and all of that. Um, and I remember that you were in, you know, this is in a room, so I don't know where that was, but uh, it was a very nice video. I just loved it. I really did. Well, that's actually a lecture that I'm going to be giving in Canada oh. um, around Lunasa. There's a symposium called the Sparks Symposium. Mm -hmm. It's in Ontario. Uh, Kitch I'm doing a talk at a bookstore in Kitchener, Ontario, and then the Sparks is somewhere nearby. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the geography that well, but um, yeah, the Celtic cosmology talk. I've also yes. given that talk at hin at a Hindu temple one time. Oh wow! <laughs> and well, they're very interested because the the Cel ancient Celtic religion and the Hindu religion are essentially the same religion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very yeah, interesting. So, it's very interesting. Yeah. And and, and um, so let, let's talk about this fantastic book that you have, The Druid Isle. And it's it's just an amazing book because I remember that we stopped talking uh, when we did the last re um, interview. You actually were just releasing the previous one, the, the sequel to this one, The Priestess of the Forest, The Dru uh, Druid Journey. And then... Mm -hmm. And then you said, well, I'm going to release now <laughs> in 2010. Yeah, this is the second. Yes. It's a trilogy, actually. The third book is coming out in the beginning of 2012, and that's called Priestess of the Fire Temple. So it's actually a trilogy of novels. That's They're amazing. all written with the idea that um, the reader can actually create the Druid Pass, or a Druid Pass, uh, by using the material in the novel. So I, tr I try to get all the uh, basic druid teachings, you know, the ritual forms and uh, beliefs and practices and tools and everything inculcated in the novel. Absolutely. Now, th one of the things that I remember that we talked on on that particular day when we had that interview, it was that this was somehow a channeling work, a channel work. So this is something that you did uh, in a almost like and and also that that it was it was embedded in the text of the book and in the story are uh, little bits of druid lore and and wisdom and magic and everything so it's absolutely amazing it's a wonderful book now um when did you begin to well you begin this with the uh with the with the priestess of the forest the journey uh druid's mm -hmm. journey um uh, this is very much. This is very much in the in the very much. It's very much the tradition of the bards, isn't it? That you 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 tell a story and then that story has in itself embedded in into it um, incredible wisdom. Well, yes, that's, I call them. Well, I don't know about the wisdom, but I call them <laughs> bardic teaching tales. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, they're teaching tales. Yes, uh, yes. And, yes, uh, the idea is it's not, I mean, I try to make it a good story, but at, at the same time, I hope that somebody will learn something. Um, because, I mean, I have been, you know, studying uh, the Celtic 
religion and history for over 20 years now, and I've traveled extensively in the countries, and I've been a Druid since 1984. You know, I've done all this stuff, and I'm and that I, it bleeds into the work. But I will say that once I sit down to write, I honestly have very little idea what's going to happen next. You know, I, yeah. I just sit down and start typing, and the characters dictate everything. I have very little to do with it once that happens. <laughs> well, it's absolutely amazing. It's a very... And the good thing is that when you open... I mean, people don't know this because they don't have a book, but uh, when you open the page, and, and uh, one of the first pages is a, it's a glossary of, and, a, and a pronunciation mm -hmm. guide that, you know, this is an incredible work on phonetics and everything. I mean, it's not Well, that small. was Alexei. That, that was Alexei Kondratiev. He, every single book that I've done... Yes. Where you see a glossary, he helped me with. It's absolutely amazing, absolutely. Yeah, so amazing. I don't know what's going to happen in the future now that he's no longer here. Yeah, that's a, it's just a terrible loss yeah. uh, for me and for many other people. Oh, absolutely, and, f and to the world, you I know? guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and uh, and then you have poetry in here, and it, it's just the light. I mean, I I just read the book, and I, I was like, <laughs> it's one of those books that you don't, you can't, you just you begin and you can't. You you can you can't take your hands off the book. You have to finish it. It's so beautiful. So into I mean it's so involving. You know you just you want to know what's happening next, and then you're and 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 as this fantastic story goes along with with you know and 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 develops, you you have this little pearls you know of of druid lore that you know are are just presented to you in a very subtle way and it's absolutely amazing and it's not oh okay time to fairy lore now or time to druid lore now no it's yeah. really embedded into it and it's so amazing and it's so coherent you know that it's absolutely well i want to i want to stress that the druid isle is a real place in its means the isle of the druids it is a real place in the hebrides in scotland that was later taken over by the christians mm -hmm. and um now it's called Iona. Yes. But originally it was the sacred island of the Druids. And the minute I set foot on that place, and again, you know, I didn't know anything. I was just a kid. This was 1983. I didn't know. I, I felt like I was in this bubble. I just felt like I was surrounded by this energy. And, um, and I, all by myself, I did this by myself, I literally ferreted out the power spots on the island. I, I went from place to place, and, and what was so nice about it was I would go, oh, here's one, and I would walk up, and there'd be this little tiny cairn of stones. So I knew that other people had been there, and they had marked it. Wow. You know? Yeah. It was, <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was fabulous. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and that was 1983, and I didn't write that book until, I guess, about three years ago I started working on it. Yeah. Um, so it, it was, you know, in the back of my mind for a long time. This is, is this, is this somehow, I mean, obviously not, but this is, this is very connected to you and your history. Um, you know, when, when you, when did you, I mean, I'm sure that we talked about this. When did you find out the name for what you were, um, you know, for, for, for the Druidry or Druidism or uh, when did you find out that you wanted to be a Druid? Well, I, again, I had no idea I wanted to be a druid. I didn't want to be a druid. I was a druid. I mean, no, I mean, it, it's crazy, but I, it was around 1982, I guess, mm -hmm. that, um, and I had an herbal practice in Philadelphia, and I, and I had clients who would come to me, and this one woman, just in conversation as I was taking her case, and in case she's listening, she was the seamstress for the Flying Karamazov Brothers, which I... I, I, I <laughs> I don't know, I forget if they're jugglers or if they're trapeze artists. Anyway, she was their seamstress. So she came to me for an herbal consultation, and in the course of the consultation, she mentioned that she had met a druid. And I had never heard anyone say that word out loud, ever. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my ears perked up and my hair stood on end, you know, druid. And I said, what? And, and it was Isaac. It was Isaac Bonowitz. Oh, wow. 
Wow. And this, she must have met him just when he was thinking about forming ADF, because by the time I joined ADF, it took me two years to find Druids. It took me two years to locate ADF. Remember, there was no internet. Yes. Um, you know, and, and I, I can't remember how I actually located them, but eventually I found them. Yeah. And that was 1984, and at that time there were only 30 members <laughs> in ADF. Wow. That's amazing. So, amazing, amazing. Yeah, and, and uh, so I did my first circle, my second circle with ADF, and then goes on. And then I went on to found, I was one of the founders of the Henge of Keltria, then I was one of the founders of the Order of White Oak. I mean, seems to be what I do. I get in on the ground floor of Druid Orders. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, why, why, why do we form more orders? I mean, is that EF? Um, it's because there is other uh, objectives that we, you know, that you want to. Well, ADF, yeah, ADF was very Indo-European. It um, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It still is, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. You can have Russian druids and Polish druids and mm -hmm. and Scandinavian <laughs> druids. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so the reason that we formed the Henge of Keltria was we wanted Celtic druids. What a concept! Yeah. But we. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted we wanted a group that was Celtic druids, so yeah, yeah. so we we hived off and and formed Keltria and and then White Oak was a whole other that was it, White Oak was supposed to be a Celtic Reconstructionist druid, which is uh, you know based on actual ancient Celtic practices, not modern anything. I, that, I, that was the concept. I guess I guess that I I asked you this before, but again we can just talk about it um, before we go to this fantastic other book that you have, a Druid Arable of Sacred Tree Medicine. Um, it's how much do we know about the Druids? I mean, is is it because there's always this concept that oh yeah, well yeah, uh, we don't really know anything about it. They didn't really write anything. Um, you know, and and we do have you know some books that were published that actually say that they had this fantastic you know uh, lore that was passed to them and everything that it's um, we don't really know if it is true or not. Probably not. But you know the thing is that how much do we know? How much did survived, or how much did we actually had to try to? <laughs> reconstruct out of uh, sometimes dust because there's nothing left. Well, most of what we know is reports from people who were not Druids, mm -hmm. you know, contemporary reports from Romans and Greeks and people like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, the process that I've used to, to, to find out about Druids, uh, I go inside to find out about Druids. I mean, you mentioned that my novels are channeled I don't know what other explanation there is for this, but um, I go inside to access what is a druid, um, and they start speaking, and then they start revealing their their rituals and their struggles and um, how they felt when the Christians showed up and all those kind of things. So that's amazing. That's amazing. No, I'm still. I'm still. I think that we again talked about this. I'm still waiting for a book from you that would tell us that story, the story, uh, the story when 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 the Christians come, and what. And that's what that's what Priestess of the Forest is all about. I know, I, mean, I know, but you know, <laughs> but that whole trilogy is about that. Did you miss that? No, 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 no. I just <laughs> wanted to know if if you have. Uh, um, you know, a non I mean, we don't have a non-fiction report of this, do we? Oh, you're looking for a history book, is yeah, that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have well. that. Well... <laughs> we don't have that. <laughs> well, we do have some things about, you know, Caesar said. Oh, yeah, we have Peter Beresford Ellis wrote a book called The Druids. Yeah, that's um, a good one, yes. Yeah, yeah Miranda yeah. Green. Actually, if you go to the White Oak uh, mm. website, whiteoakdruids.org, yeah. Um, we have a bibliography there. Uh, yeah, Miranda Green wrote a book called The Druids. There's Cunliffe. The, I mean, there's 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 two books called The World of the Druids. Uh, two different authors wrote books with the same title. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're out there, but it, it, there's no one book. I mean, that's the thing. You you really have to read widely and deeply to get a sense of it. And, and then you also have to read. Um, 
I mean, I, I do believe that the Hindu religion and the ancient Celtic religion do come from the same Vedic tradition. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to get the depth, you really need to read the Rig Veda, um, the Upanishads. Uh, you know, you need to study um, the ancient Hindu texts or, mm -hmm. or Vedic texts, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and as well as read the, the uh, Celtic archaeology and 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 Ellen Ellen Alfred Opman, um, you know, trilogy trilogy. Yes, and read my book. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Yeah. Just read my book. Just read her and books. And give them to all your friends. And <laughs> exactly, and you will know exactly what happened. Um, no, but <laughs> this is this is very well. People, do you? It, does it bother you that people will compare you to Marion Zim, Zim, Zimmer Bradley or not? No. It doesn't. <laughs> you know, because sometimes uh, what? What? Uh, but it's it's something that people. Well, there, yeah. I mean, the, I, actually, that's a compliment because I mean, her. <laughs> I must say that the Mists of Avalon is a very entertaining read. I mean, if I could come even close to that in terms of entertainment value, I'd be thrilled. The big difference between me and her, of course, is that she's she started out with the characters. Um, the characters were already formed. She has the the Arthurian characters, you know, that's what she's working with. Mm -hmm. My my books, I start from scratch. I have absolutely no clue who the characters are or what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I literally just sit down and out they come, you know. That's amazing. That's it's amazing. a different kettle of fish. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's a very <laughs> rare, you know, way of writing because there's, there's a, f a few people that I know that actually have this uh, ability to actually write you know, channeling like you, it's absolutely amazing. Now, the, <laughs> this was what not was not channeled, was it? The a druid herb, herbal of uh, the sacred three medicine. No, again, this is another book that is footnoted. Um, this is actual Irish uh, tradition. It's focused on Ireland this time, mm -hmm. um, around trees, and I I use the Om alphabet, uh, the, the ancient tree alphabet, mm -hmm. as the organizing. Mm -hmm principle for the book, but I, I go a lot into the herbal uses of the trees, yes. uh, as, as well as the spiritual aspects and the um, mythological aspects, and again, I do put in some of my own experiences. Um, I have four long essays in there on the fire festivals, so in, including recipes and, and uh, rituals that you can do in bulk, Lunasa, Salon, Gyaltana, or Belting. Um, so that you can practice them in the actual traditional ways, mm -hmm. you know, the, mm -hmm. um, that's in there. Uh, I have um, tree affirmations uh, when you need to call on specific trees for magical or spiritual strength uh, or healing. And those are things that, that, again, the trees just came to me. They said, here, here. <laughs> here <know>? it is. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but the good thing is that I I love well. First of all, you have all the the Latin names of the of each of them, which is good, um, and and also I I really appreciate the caution parts of it. I mean, you have a lot of caution, caution, caution. You know, this yeah. Is this is that, something that this is something that you don't <laughs> see uh, no, even no. in in herbals, which makes me a little nuts. Um, in fact, there there's a wonderful Scottish book. Um, called Healing Threads, um, which I do reference um, in my Scottish book. But she will just make some little offhand remark about this plant is used for this or something, and mm -hmm. that's all she says, you know. Yeah. So, so what I try to do in my books, if I'm going to mention a plant, I want to tell you exactly, you know, how, what part you're going to use, uh, how much to use for a 150-pound adult, you know, and then the 75-pound child will get half of that and so on. Um, infants get it through the mother's breast milk. Here's the part of the plant that you use. Um, if you're diabetic, if you're a nursing mother, uh, if you have high blood pressure, whatever, avoid this, you know. I mean, I try to be as precise as possible. You know, don't take it for more than two weeks or whatever. That's because I have an herbal background. I, I am a professional member of the American Herbalist Guild, and I think that's something that, if, especially the new book, um, Scottish Herbs and Fairy Lore, you'll find a Highland Herbal, which is a big section in the middle, 
But I do that for every single herb. I tell you what the actual dosage is, what the cautions are, how to prepare it, you know, what part to use, and so on. I'm very careful about that. I try to be. This is the the this book, the Drizzle of Sacred Tree Medicine. Um, I mean, you have another one, which is the Wheel of the Year, but this one is absolutely amazing because it. There is a few books that I think that sometimes. I mean, there's a lot of books about the OM, you know, alphabet. Um, and the use of it, um, but it's it's so confusing. People don't don't really. I mean, people pick a lot. For instance, the futak, futak, you know, uh, alphabet, because it's you know the runes and you know every everybody use it. It's it, you don't see too much people using the om uh, alphabet. Why why do you think it's uh, is it because it's complicated? Is it because it's too vast? What 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 do you think about this? Well, I honestly, I just think that that Futhark was sort of popularized by what was his name, Bloom. Yes, Bloom um, or Bloom. Yeah. yeah, he he popularized it. He brought it out into the New Age uh, audience, which is a huge audience, you know. Yeah. And he and a lot of his stuff was made up. By the way, it wasn't real stuff. It was just made up and simplified. Um, so the people had this very simple little system that they could use uh, based on his interpretations. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess uh, the OM hasn't been popularized yet <laughs> <laughs> like that. I mean, I, I, I certainly am not the one to do that because, you know, I, I have a lot of, I hate to say it, but I have profound respect, you know, for the actual ancient traditions. And one, one of the things that I did, though, that's a little different in that book, um, I did do a lot of research, and I did spend time in Ireland, and I did hang out with the forest druids in Ireland, and I do quote them in the book, and um, I'm still friends with some of them. But uh, there are a lot of gaps in the knowledge, so what I tried to do was I, I, when there were, if there was a tree, because that, that, they've forgotten, the Irish druids have forgotten how to use the trees. And they're trying to piece together uh, what they've lost. So I turn to Native American traditions. Again, I'm very careful. I say, you know, this comes from the Cherokee. This comes from the Navajo. This, you know, I don't say the Native Americans. You know, I try to be very <laughs> precise. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, this is how this particular, the, this is how the Iroquois used this tree, or this is how the Algonquin used it. But it gives you a clue because um, a lot of the same trees that, uh, that you reference um, the only there's only one uh, blackthorn is the only one that that you don't really find in the United States if you do it's because it was introduced but all the other uh, trees of the Elm alphabet were used here by Native Americans and these are people who worked with the trees for, for millennia yeah, you know yeah. so you can learn how to use them for medicine and magic and all that, um, you know, to fill in the gaps. But uh, but I'm, I try to be very careful about saying where I got everything that it, that's in there. Did you did you uh, compare these uh, with uh, the druids in Ireland? I mean, did you took this this knowledge that you gathered from the tribes in America and and said, do you, this does this make sense to you in any? Well, way? actually, no. My, what actually happened is um, in 1990, I had a book that's now out of print. Um, tree Medicine, Tree Magic. It's now out of print, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Wish somebody would pick it up. <laughs> but um, I took copies with me to Ireland. And, you know, in all innocence, I'm thinking, oh, I'll go meet some druids and they'll give me lots more information. So I got over there and they, they, were, they said, oh, my goodness. They said, we're trying to piece together. You've done the work of what we're trying to do. <laughs> they said, you... <laughs> because they were trying to recreate the magic and the medicine of the trees. They didn't have it. Yeah. And um, they were astounded when they saw this book. There it was, you know. And wow. so I gave away copies, and um, I had my little tree salve with me. You know. I mean, I tell the story in, in the book. Um, one of the forest druids uh, jumped the fire. It was summer solstice. He fell into the fire got a uh, burning ember lodged in the flesh of his leg because he fell in, I guess, on his knees. And uh, I gave him my tree salve, which is made primarily with uh, horse chestnuts and walnut hulls and olive oil and beeswax uh, with lavender, calendula, uh, and comfrey thrown in. Um, 
And he put that on, and he never had to go to the hospital. The pain went away almost immediately. Um, he was healed beautifully within a week. That's amazing. Never went to the doctor. So, um, and, yeah, I mean... It, the stuff works. <laughs> oh yeah, it does. It does. No, but I want. I just wanted to know if they actually. But that's very interesting because you know sometimes we hear about druids and druids. It's kind of like um, we hear about the secrecy, uh, or or not. You know, they don't really reveal. You know, obviously there are public druids, um, but they are some. Well, of no. Them, let me l go ahead. When right? I let me let me explain. Mm -hmm. I was invited to speak at a pagan gathering yes. in Ireland. Yes. There were about 100 people there. Mm -hmm. There were 99 witches and one druid. <laughs> and that's about, the, that's about the percentage, you know. I mean, even in this country, yeah. uh, you go to any pagan gathering and 99.9% .9 of them are going to be witches. Yeah, that's Wiccans, true. witches, or generic pagans, yeah. and you're going to find one druid. That's or maybe true. two if you're lucky. <laughs> It's rare. <laughs> it's rare. It is. Yeah, yeah. Apart from all of these orders and and you know that people are uh, entitled then to be druids, you know, um, all over. But you know those druids that really I I've heard about druids in um, in Iberia in in Spain actually. And, right. And nobody, South Iberia. Yeah. yeah Galicia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and sure. and some of them actually, you know, some of them I, you know, you don't really know. One of the things that I find it very interesting is that you don't know the. They never reveal how old they are, which is very interesting. <laughs> I don't what do you know. mean? How old they are? They don't you mean say their age, the, or, yeah, what, they or age. the age of they, their tradition. No, 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 no. They age. They're age. I'm not. You know, they don't have. Um, you know, obviously they do because they're human. But uh, <laughs> but they they don't. Well, really I personally that. personally I can remember all the way back to the seventh century. So how old am I? See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> There's a reason why you know druids <laughs> don't say their age because there are more. I mean, if if you would say. <laughs> Well, I'm a couple Actually. of, you know, thousands of years old. <laughs> well, okay, let's let's put her into the hospital, <laughs> you know, and turn her. But it's really, it's really, it's beautiful because it's. I think that that's what it's present when when they really don't say it, um, or you know, you don't you don't ask because they uh, they remember. They remember mm -hmm. a lot, and and so how old are you? You know what I mean. So wh what is what is old? You know, or what is being old? Is is are you referring to my body, or are you referring to what I am? Um, you know, uh, spiritually and everything. I mean, it's very interesting to to think about that also. So um, did we talked about everything? No, we didn't. Did we? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I think that we <laughs> have we have this fantastic. Okay, so let's let's do a, a recap here, which is very um, interesting. So you, um, you know, Alan has a lot of um, of books. The first book that I read of you uh, was the Druid's Herbal for the Sacred Year, uh, Earth Year, which is mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> Um, it has beautiful um, artwork actually in it also, um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Because when I first, did you remember when I first tell you? Um, oh, I I read one of your books. Did you remember that? And he said, which one? And I said, well, the druid's herbal. Which one? Because <laughs> you have more than one. So the yeah. druid's herbal for the sacred earth year was the one that I actually. Um, that I actually read, and then uh, I read this one, the Druid Herbal for the Sacred Tree Medicine, which is absolutely amazing. I, you know, I remember that um, Nigel Panic. I think uh, he had uh, books about the Owen, um, and there's other people with um, books about the Owen. But I think that this is very, very good. But you know, you have to understand that this is obviously about sacred tree medicine, but also you have the divinatory you know, meanings of this, the, right, the tree divination, yeah, tree divination yeah. Om, Om divination, which is absolutely amazing. Now, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about this? How do you do a set to, to define with Om? 
How do you do a set? Yeah, a set of uh, little. How do you do it? It's from each oh, well, tree. It's yeah, you know. Well, you it okay. It, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of ways. <laughs> uh, you could have a little. You could have little ohm stones that you paint the ohm on. You could have cards. Mm -hmm. Um, you could do one uh, stone or three stones or five stones, you mm -hmm. know. Um, if you need immediate guidance, I would pick one stone. If you want to do past, present, and future, you know, you do three different stones, three different trees. Uh, if you want to do, um, er, you know, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit, whatever, you could do five. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing I like to do, um, once you learn the properties of the trees, I like to do a tree meditation where I do a centering and then I walk into the literally into the forest. Of course, I live in a forest. I live in an oak forest, so it makes things a little easier for me. <laughs> uh, I just go out the door. But um, you kind of close down your eyes and you, you follow your feet. You're, you, know, you let your feet take you somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, you open the eyes and the soles of your feet. That's how I think mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And your feet take you, not mm -hmm. your head, your feet. Mm -hmm. And your feet will lead you to a particular tree. And then you look up and you see what the species is, and that's how you get your message. That's amazing. Very nice. That's a wonderful yeah. way of doing it. There are other people who actually say that, um, you know, you have to cut a little bit of, a, of each tree, correspond it to each of the letters, and then you just engrave the, the letters in each of the you trees. You could do that. That's you another could do one. that. Yeah, that's another one. Another another way. Uh, and uh, and then they have all this, uh, you know, this uh, kind of like system. The sticks. Yeah, the stick the system. Old sticks. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's um, another but I, one. I mean, I try to cover all of that in the book. I cover yeah. different ways of doing it in the book. And you actually say doing OM readings for others. So it's kind of like, you know, OM yeah. yeah. OM as a tool of blessing, making an OM. Um, it's just an amazing definition with living trees. This is the other one. Uh, drum divination. So it's absolutely amazing. And then you have the divinatory meanings, which is very, very good. Uh, and the affirmations along with that. And one thing that I one thing I've been doing is making elixirs out of the different trees and when I do go to, you know, a pagan pride gathering or a festival or something, I'll bring the elixirs with me and then people if they need a, the a particular tree, if they need the stability of oak, you yes, know, something yeah. like that, um, they can use the oak elixir uh, to anoint themselves with. But you if you get the book, that's the value of the book is you can learn uh, the the personality of each tree, and then you can figure out which tree you need for your journey in life. What's the next thing that you need to strengthen you or to help you? Mm -hmm. And then um, you can make uh, magical tools out of that particular wood. Um, you can anoint yourself with it, you can put it in your food, you can put it in your drink, you can bathe in it, um, you can strew it um, on the ground, you can put it on your altar. I mean, But you have to learn, before you can work with the trees that way, you really need to learn the properties of each tree. Absolutely, absolutely. The spiritual qualities, and that's what I try to cover. The, the other book that you mentioned, The Druids, Herbal for the Sacred Earth Year is more centered on, on herbs, yes. plants, yeah, yeah. and the Druid's Herbal of Sacred Tree Medicine is more centered on trees. Yeah, yeah. Now, the Tree Medicine, Tree Magic is the one that it's out of print. Um, right. They uh, they do have in Amazon. I just find this amazing. I mean, when you Oh, go, you can still find it. Yeah. yeah. But it's hugely expensive. <laughs> you get uh, four new for $65, which is amazing to me. Which I is saw good. One copy, go, one copy went for $75. Isn't I that amazing? That. And then yeah. 23 used for $13.93. So. Um, <laughs> They're used. Oh, you mean each? No, that's no, no. Yeah, each. each, each. No, no, not, not twenty-three for thirteen. For 13. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, that yeah. that probably depends on the condition that it's in, you yeah, know. Yeah. But yeah, I just I wish some publisher would would step up and uh, and and take that book because it was very nice, very nice. Well, book. it's a classic. Let me just say that <laughs> you know, approved uh, by the Druids in Ireland. So. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's absolutely amazing. It's one of those books. Why Why do you think that people are not picking it up? I mean, you know, uh, any publisher. What do you think then? Um, 
Is it not sellable? Well, it's sellable. I mean, it's still it's yeah, it's a very nice book, but it's still designed for a very esoteric audience. I mean, they want something that's going to be a big seller. You know, mm. like um, some movie star tells all Lindsay Lohan's uh, con- true confessions or something. I mean, that's what they want. They want something that's going to have a big, wide mass appeal. Oh. You know, oh, okay. tree medicine and tree magic has a very niche audience. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you detain the the rights of this book? Is that what are you? Oh yeah, I have the rights. Oh, okay. Yeah, the rights went back to me. Oh, that's I may. That's something. If anyone's listening who's an aspiring writer, make sure that in your contract. That's the very important. You must have something in there that if the book goes out of print or if the publisher goes out of business, that the book goes back to you. Because I have a friend in England right now. Mm-hmm. Um, his publisher went out of business, oh and then the same people formed a new publishing company, and now they, they want him to pay them for the rights to his own book on the grounds that it's not the same publishing company anymore. Oh, my. Or some insane thing. (laughs) It's the same people, but they have a new publishing company. It's so horrible. So he has to buy the rights to his own book back, and that's crazy, you know. That's absolutely crazy. You shouldn't, yeah, you shouldn't do that. So let me just show people um, where they can find the the new book. I mean, this is is, uh, Pendrag um, Publishing. Uh, right. Which we had, we had, um, we had here um, also, uh, and uh, and it's it's called Scottish Herbs and Fairy Lore. It's right here. It's going to be out again. It's actually um, uh, not really. I mean, it, they they say June two thousand and eleven, but we know now that it's June twenty first. So it's right here. Um, you can come and to... And it should be on Amazon about a week, a week after, after that. Yeah, a week after. And, That's, it, yeah. and I'll have it in July on my own site, I hope. Yeah, yeah. So it's... And I have a bookstore on my own website. Oh. Everybody should go there. Oh, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. And you have also... Uh, l- let me see here. Uh, published work. So, see, uh, when, I, when I'm, I'm, I'm just showing this to people. Uh, you have uh, Making k- uh, Kitchen Medicines, a practical guide. That's another one that you didn't talk about. Well, that also went out of print, oh. and I'm currently looking for a new publisher for that one. Oh, that's amazing! That's very. That cool. was just a little how-to manual. That's that, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, people like it. It's very simple uses of herbs and foods in the kitchen mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. for healing work, and uh, it's looking for a publisher. So you have little buttons that says, well, not really little buttons, but but it's kind of like order here between parentheses, so you can just actually mm-hmm. buy them. The only that you can't buy, <laughs> wink, wink, to publishers, uh, it's three medicine, three magic. But but we well, we, you can get that on Amazon used. Yes. But, yeah. but the thing is, yeah, I don't get any royalties that no, way no, if you do no, that. No. But. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's 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 a shame. <laughs> so being a pagan yeah. is another one, which is um, very interesting. This was something that you it was published in '96, right? This is another one, but it, they can't order this one. Right? They can't. Yeah, they can't. No, they no, can. they can they get can. it from me. They can get it from Inner Traditions. They yeah. can get it from Amazon. They can. Yeah, that, I mean that. That's uh, that book. Um, I interviewed 96. actually. Um, well, Victor Anderson was in the original one. Uh, then it got uh, the book got updated, and for some reason they dropped Victor Anderson. But <laughs> but Alexei Kondratiev is in there. Isaac Bonowitz is in there. Um, Oberon Zell, Starhawk. Um, you know, Margot Adler, and then a lot of people that you've not heard of. I tried to do. Uh, it's a journalistic effort, and I tried to interview representatives from all the major uh, traditions, mm-hmm, uh, pagan mm-hmm, traditions, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. Strega, Asatru, um, Norse traditions, uh, Druids, Celtic traditions, w- uh, traditional English witchcraft, Wicca, uh, you know, you name it, it's in there. Um, <laughs> so that a person who doesn't know anything about paganism, who wants to get a, a sense of the breadth of it, because it's such a huge you know, mishmash of stuff. There's so many different traditions and paths. Um, and my idea was that I wanted to get it from the leaders of the various traditions yes, in yeah. their words. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. 
So that's what that is. Now we're looking at also uh, some workshops that that you provide to people, and they're very interesting. Uh, one of them, and you have two new workshops that you're doing right now. One is Nine Principles of Celtic Spirituality, and the other one is Writing Your Soul's Purpose: The Craft of the Written Word. And um, you do do the <laughs> the three magic, three uh, ma madness in three magic also, and uh, a bunch of other uh, fantastic workshops. There's another one new here, which is thinking outside of the box, ancient European ritual forms, which is very very promising. And wonder, I wonder if you're going to do this close to me. <laughs> And uh, there's a lot of workshops that you can actually contact um, Alan to do, right? Yeah, I mean, if people are interested in, in having me come out and, and do something, by all means, you can email me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> I have a website. What else? <laughs> no, I think that's it. <laughs> I can be found. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I do little uh, – I'm doing Scottish um, – magic and you know Scottish healing uh, tradition now and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, you know especially that's... with the new book um, I can do all kinds of druid stuff Celtic stuff tree stuff herb stuff <laughs> All kinds of stuff. Lots of stuff. <laughs> Lots of stuff. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. Uh, the other thing that I want to really um, emphasize here is the, um, the, the there there are things that, you know, I think that you, you, this is just something that I think that it's important. It's the audio. And today, um, you know, uh, you have, you still have cassettes, right? That you're still <laughs> using cassettes. Um, but, you know, it's the Druid Path, um, herbs and festivals. Well, but I have DVDs. Oh, I mean, yeah. I did have things out on video, but they're now DVDs. No, I know, I know. But this is the, I think, <laughs> this is the audio. There are some cassettes, the, yes, the but, but I don't think anyone buys those anymore. No, 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 no. <laughs> so you should turn this into um, um, uh, CDs, you know, the, the audio releases that you have here. Right? It's yeah. just audio tapes, yeah. but you can just do it uh, in a CD form, which is absolutely amazing. DVDs, you have you have a lot of them. Pagan's The Wheel of the Year, of the Sacred Year, it's it's a wonderful one. You have also The Gifts from the Healing Earth, Volume 1 and 2, right? Yeah, I want to say something about the Pagan's DVD. When I created that, um, Ernie Urbotter was the producer, and we worked on it for years. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really hoping that it would be used as a teaching tool. It's designed so that it can be shown in high schools and colleges, um, at churches and places. You know, it's it's G-rated. There's no nudity. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing shocking in there. But what it does is it goes through the Wheel of the Year, and it shows, again, many different pagan traditions, and it's got... Um, beautiful music. Uh, Patty Keenan from the Bothy Band did some original music mm -hmm. for the DVD. And I have a friend um, who has, he's Irish, a beautiful Irish accent, reading some of the poetry and uh, of the photography is exquisite. It was all done here in western New England. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really designed as a teaching tool so, to teach people the breadth of what paganism is, uh, what it looks like. You know, it's not staged. It's the camera is actually following us around as we prepare for ritual, as we do the ritual, mm -hmm. after the ritual. You know, it's what we really look like and what we really do. It's not hokey at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and so I, I was kind of visualizing Unitarians. I was hoping the Unitarians would pick up on it. They didn't really pick up on it, but that's what I was hoping. Yeah, um, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Now you have a new DVD on Celtic com cosmology. That's the one that you That's were talking right. about. Um, mm -hmm. But it doesn't really have anything in here. I mean, little photographs of it. And but I think that it's it's a fantastic. I mean, this was produced. When when was this produced? I think it was about two or three years ago mm -hmm. when it was filmed. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, it was a, a workshop that I did at a, a local uh, venue here in the where I live in the area nearby. Um, but I had all props, you know, swords and cauldrons and, and things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, a, it's, it's really, really interesting. I mean, it really is. Um, and then what do you have? Oh, you have the blog, the blog that you do, right? 
Every month, uh, if you go to my website, every month I have a blog. And um, what I do is I, and I've been doing this for years now, um, each month I, I collect all the latest archaeological news, because that's mm -hmm. what I'm interested in, and also news about the natural world, and occasionally some religion news. And um, I, I have all the links there. And then I just write about what I'm thinking about, you know, whatever is on my mind that month mm -hmm. and um, it, it goes back for years you can you can read it that's amazing very good and you do have articles also on this website which is uh, absolutely amazing one of the texts mm -hmm. that I really think that it's absolutely amazing and very very you know uh, clear and uh, good I mean I, I just love it it's pillars of the Celtic cosmology um, I really like that one a lot, and it's just very, and it has this beautiful photographs as you see here, um, and it's very referenced, you know, um, it's beautiful, it's, it's, I mean, very, very good. I really loved this, this particular article that you have here, um, and you have a lot of historical re resources and for the reading that people can actually try to um, to to get a little bit more out of it and it's absolutely amazing I love it I really do so even if if you don't have Alan's books you can go <laughs> into her website and you can actually yeah. read the articles um, if you wanted to and it's wonderful so um, it's it's very very good now tell me a little bit more about the uh, the order of the white oak because that's very important I think that we should uh, direct people there if they wanted to know a little bit more about it well that started out in 1996 as a mailing list I actually started the mailing list in 1996 and then by 1997 we were having this long we had a year-long discussion about what is a druid <laughs> what a druid is, what a druid isn't, what a druid should know, mm -hmm. what books they should have read, what tools they should have, what rituals they should observe, what practices, and then at some point we said, hey, we have a druid order. And then, <laughs> uh, that, so a year later, in 1997, it was solstice, 19, uh, winter solstice 1997, there were 12 of us, I guess there were about 60 or 70 people on the list, and about 50 druids. Um, and uh, 12 of us decided that we were going to uh, do a self-initiation because we were the first group. And we stayed up all night. We all did this all-night vigil, and um, we initiated ourselves, and we became the original 12, and then it's been going ever since. Um, I, I have to say I did create most of the tools for the order. I created most of the rituals. If you go to the White Oak website... I am already here. <laughs> Okay, I think every ritual there, with maybe one exception, I created. Um, I think I created all tools, with one exception, that the initiates use. Mm -hmm. um, I co-created the major uh, oath that we take. Mm -hmm. And um, I fostered a lot of people. I, you know, I, the fostering process takes about three years, and I, I don't know, I fostered I don't know, close to 20 people or something. Mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly the number. But um, what's happened now is, uh, you know, I've, I've been do I did that for 14 years, and I was co-chief for five years because that was we only had chiefs for five years. There were two of us, mm -hmm. and um, now I'm sort of backing off because now that it's been all set up, the teaching program is in place, the training program. Um, Everything is in place, and I'm kind of backing off. No, well, so I don't know what where I'm going next. <laughs> well, you're going somewhere. We always know that you're going somewhere. <laughs> even somewhere, if it, yeah. Even if it is, you know, on the other side of the of the ocean, uh, you're going somewhere. I wish. I hope. I go. I'm desperate to get back over. <laughs> I know. I know. Now, what what do you do in this in this order of the white oak? What what do you mean? What well, you well, mean? What, what do people I do? do? What people or do? What do no, people what do? people do? Yeah, in general. Well, it's what is the premise? It's designed. Of it? It's supposed to be a teaching program for yeah. for druids. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be trained, it's a good training program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the primary purpose. Do you have uh, kind of like you know uh, not grades but you know like uh, levels uh, of of attainment of of? You're you know, either an initiate or you're not. And that's it. <laughs> 
And that's it. <laughs> that's basically but then, but I, no, I should say, though, once you become an initiate, then you publicly declare a specialty. That's all. Like, one person might say, I'm going to be a historian. Someone else might say, I'm going to be a bard. Uh, you yeah, know, you yeah. pick a specialty, and the idea is that you will master that craft, and you will teach others. That's so it's all about teaching, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. That's that right. you'll spend the rest of your life uh, mastering and teaching That's that great. craft. That's great. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking with Ellen Effort Oppmann, and uh, her new book is going to be out soon, Scottish Herbs and Fairy Lore, and out soon I mean June 21st, and uh, it's from Pendrake um, Publishing. You can get there by typing www.pendragepublishing.com, and one week after the 21st, it should be on Amazon and available to you, um, and we will hope in many more other places. Also, you can go to Alan's website, which is, by the way, alaneverettopman.com, and that's E-L-L-E-N-E-V-E-R-T-H-O-P-M-A-N.com. And and you can just buy the books in there. I'm sure that you're going to publish this uh, in your website. Obviously, you know that your book, your new book, it's a wonderful book. It's a big book, <laughs> but it's a fantastic <laughs> book with wonderful information for you about um, all things Scottish and all things fairy. Uh, it's absolutely amazing, and and it promises to be a wonderful reference book um, if you want to know a little bit more about you know uh, Scottish which uh, um, Scottish magic and lore and fairy lore related to, Scot to Scottish um, culture so it's absolutely amazing um, yeah and I do I have I try to be as practical as possible I yes, have a lot yeah. of uh, recipes in there a lot of recipes um, you know things that hands-on things that you can actually do if you want to celebrate uh, the festivals, you know, um, and you have in a traditional you, way. You have invocations. You have mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. I mean, it's so beautiful. It's absolutely amazing. Amazing. This book, this book, I'm, I'm telling you, um, everybody that listening to us, this is, if, if not one of the, it, it will be one of the, one, if, if we have, I think we should gather everybody and have this kind of book of the year award. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know that you can just gather the pagan book of the year award. You know, I don't know. Do we have that? I don't think so. Do well, we? why don't you start it? I know. We can start that. Just create that. it. Yes. People can vote on your website. Exactly. You yeah, yeah. So book of the year, <laughs> we, we just choose uh, like three books and then they just vote it. You know. And they vote. Yeah, and they vote and then they can just, you know, it's wonderful. I'm going to start that. Thank you very mm, much. There you go. Alan. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, and you, you could be like the Caldecott medal. You could have a, an actual medal medallion that exactly. you could go on the book. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, it's kind of st uh, something that you can just put on, on the website of the book, that it's kind of like the mm -hmm. seal of book the of book the year? of the year. Big in book of the yeah. year. Why not? Sure. Oh, we just had a birth here of something very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I say do it. Oh yes, absolutely. Ellen, the problem's going to be how are you going to pick the three books? I know. Well, but you know, we have to. I mean, there's yes, always you have to. Yeah, there's you always must. yeah, there's always this kind of like how the hell did he come up with the three books? <laughs> but you know, you have to. I mean, it's it's something that you have to choose from every book published in that year. You have to choose three. And that's it. So we'll see. Um, okay, so that's that's very very interesting. I guess that I'm going to start that right now. So, <laughs> Ellen, thank you so much for being here and and for laughing with us, for sharing your knowledge with us, and um, and to be so so generous uh, to write these fantastic books for us all in the world to take advantage of. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, thank you, and maybe if I write another book. We'll do this again. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I'm always up to an interview with Alan F. Hoffman. Um, oh, just thank don't, you. don't go anywhere because I'm, I'm going to talk to you in a minute, okay? Don't, don't hang okay. up, okay? I'm just going to close okay. the show, okay? Ladies okay. and gentlemen, thank you so much. This was Ellen Efford Oppman and um, her books, and this was Witch Talk. Next week, we'll be back again with uh, other 
fantastic uh, things for you and another wonderful guest. More Witch Reads and a lot of fun. Until then, thank you for watching and for listening, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.